another person killed while crossing the road. It is extremely dangerous. You know, we just knew that it was a matter of time. The years long battle by neighbors to make this stretch of road safer for walkers and why nothing has been done about it. Nearly killed by something she ate. The pain was so horrible. It felt like there was a knife in my stomach. One local teen's crusade to keep others from getting sick and nationwide changes she's helping to shape. The largest grow house bust in Las Vegas history. The sophisticated and expensive setup found inside a normally quiet neighborhood. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is Channel 8 News Now at 11. Thanks for joining us. Dave is off tonight. For the fourth time in this new year, another pedestrian is dead. Today, an elderly woman was killed trying to cross the street on a stretch where there's very few crosswalks. Neighbors say they've been trying for years to get a crosswalk in that area. Joe Bartels is live on Decatur near Lake Mead to tell us what the holdup has been. Joe. Paul, there are no marked crosswalks on this stretch of Decatur between Lake Mead Boulevard and Vegas Drive. That's almost a mile stretch. Police say an 83-year-old woman was hit and killed as she tried to cross Decatur today. Neighbors say they've been trying for years to try and get a crosswalk here, and tonight the city says they're working on it. Cars zoom past the spot where an elderly woman's life was ended in an instant. Police say the crash that claimed her life didn't have to happen. Well, here we are again. Uh, this is another avoidable pedestrian fatality on our roadways. Police say the woman was not in a crosswalk as she attempted to run across seven lanes. I, I realize that the crosswalks might be far, far between here, but you know, this is the consequences of making that deadly decision is, uh, you know, this is something that could happen. I'm out there all the time. Sunny Ferrari and her neighbors say they've been trying to get some kind of crosswalk installed so they can get across to cater without gambling with their lives. We've been working, the uh, residents here have been uh, talking with Councilman uh, Ricky Barlow for years about let's, you know, we need something, you know, we need a walkway or e either an overpass. We reached out to the city about the crosswalk issue. They said a traffic study was completed last year and they found there should be a crosswalk in the exact spot where the tragic crash happened. City leaders say it's planned, it's approved, but there's no money to put it in. A problem that may have cost a woman her life. We knew it was gonna happen and it's, it just, it's sad because um, the lady who lost her life today, she was just well loved by the community here. In the meantime, police continue to plead for everyone to pay more attention. We're just, uh, you know, scratching our heads and, and hoping that today's the last one. And tonight, some flowers and a candle have been left behind as a tribute to the woman who lost her life. Police say this crash was pedestrian error, but they're still investigating. The name of the victim has not yet been released, and the city just recently completed improvements to the sidewalks, the sidewalk ramps, and for and lighting as, as well. And la leaders say that the crosswalk could be installed in the next few months if everything goes according to plan. Reporting live, Joe Bartels, 8 News Now. Thank you, Joe. A 79-year-old man is facing charges after hitting and killing a pedestrian back in May. Chester Francis Budd was arrested on a warrant last month, accused of driving under the influence. According to police, he struck a 71-year-old man walking on the sidewalk on Hampton near Sun City in Henderson. Blood work showed that Budd had a generic form of the sleep aid Ambien in his system at the time. Local police are trying everything they can to tackle pedestrian deaths. The number nearly doubled last year. But Las Vegas isn't the only large metropolitan area battling this problem. Phoenix has just as many pedestrian deaths, 40 last year, but that is a larger city. Traffic deaths in general spiked last year in Nevada. 258 people died on roads in our state. That's 12 more than the year before. But the numbers are even more staggering in greater Las Vegas. Metro Police investigated 109 traffic deaths last year. One of the deadliest crashes was one that demolished this bus stop. The number of road fatalities was 72 in 2011. 
One of two men accused of a murder for hire plot admitted guilt today. Noel Stevens and George TFA both appeared in court. Police say that George hired Stevens to kill his estranged wife, Shauna TFA, for $600 up front and promising more later. TFA's arraignment came first. And how do you plead to those eight counts? Noel Stevens appeared just a few hours later to enter a very different plea of guilty. Shauna's sister, Paula Stokes Richards, shared her heartache and seeing it all unfold. His demeanor is very odd, but for, for the type of crimes that he committed against Shauna, I'm not sure what I would expect there either. I, he seemed very uh, nonchalant, very cocky, smirked, smiled. George TFA's family also showed up in court but declined to make a statement. His trial is set for next January. Three people are now in jail for a robbery that turned murderous. It happened at the Harbor Island Apartments on Harmon near Paradise Tuesday night. A woman and three men showed up at one of the units, forced their way in, and started taking things. A fight ensued, and two of the people living in the apartment were shot dead. Another person was shot and survived. Three suspects were arrested, 20-year-old Sasha Williams, 22-year-old Maurice Sims and 23-year-old Brandon Range. The fourth is on the loose. The arrest report said at least one of the suspects was known to the residents. Police now say the pot bust they made last night is the largest they've ever seen. The department released three pic these pictures today showing just how sophisticated the operation was inside this home near Fort Apache and Desert Inn. Nearly 1,500 plants were discovered growing in every room of the house. The operation was worth $4.5 million. Two people were caught trying to flee the house. They were booked and put in jail, but their names have not yet been released. When SWAT officers were investigating last night, something inside the house was making them ill. None of them had to go to the hospital, but they did have to be decontaminated. A robot was sent into the house to investigate the smell, but no exact source was ever located. Henderson police conducted a narcotics-related investigation at the site of a fire yesterday. Firefighters were called to battle the blaze at these businesses on American Pacific near Gibson. Metro's hazard response team, known as Armor, was also on scene. Mayor Carolyn Goodman tonight called for the state legislature to step up and improve education to help Las Vegas thrive. Businesses are not coming here because of the educational quality. Investment is held up, physicians won't come. We know this and we have it proven. And our workforce, if we don't do something, our workforce will be ill-prepared. Ill Goodman spoke for just over an hour, delivering her second State of the City address. She says putting better teachers and equipment in inner city schools and funding Clark County schools is essential. Goodman says her hopes for 2013 include expansion of the Cleveland Clinic's Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health. They've been so successful. They have brought us medical tourism, the very first medical tourism here in Nevada. Goodman also touted achievements from 2012, including more businesses and attractions opening up downtown, from the Mob Museum to the Smith Center for the Performing Arts. We expect the food we buy from the grocery store to be safe, but the unthinkable happened to a six-year-old Henderson girl after eating bagged spinach. Riley Gustafson almost died from E. coli. Now a new law is being drafted to prevent tainted food from hitting store shelves. Ted Florendo reports. She was only nine years old, and she thought she was going to die. The pain was so horrible. It felt like there was a knife in my stomach. Riley Gustafson's organs were failing. I didn't know what was happening to me. Doctors found out her sickness came from E. coli, and Riley didn't get it from meat. It was from a bag of store-bought spinach. It was a really big surprise to me because my family and I always eat healthy, and we think, well, everybody thinks, you know, spinach, oh, it's the most healthiest thing. So I was gonna come Riley up. is now 16. She and her mother are now advocates for stricter food safety inspections, making nearly a dozen trips to Washington, D.C. And I don't want anybody to get sick like I did, and that's why I advocate. And that's why I'm sending this Congress a plan. Three years ago, President Obama passed the Food Safety Modernization Act, a law that required tougher food inspection requirements for food producers. 
This week, that law is being drafted. Riley and her mom say it's a victory. Six years later, she may look like your average teenager, but long-term health effects linger. She suffers from diabetes and will someday need a new kidney. I'm still frequently always scared, like I always try to eat cooked food. As this new law is finally being drafted, Riley hopes it will prevent others from going down a similar road to recovery. Ted Florendo, 8 News Now. That spinach was to blame for a nationwide E. coli outbreak that sickened nearly 50 people. The Food Safety Modernization Act will impose stricter, stricter regulations on imported foods and toughen food inspection requirements. Foodborne illnesses strike about 48 million Americans a year. Health officials are trying to get ahead of an especially severe start to the flu season. Already 18 people have died nationwide. Here in Nevada, there have been 22 confirmed cases of people falling ill from the flu and the numbers continue to increase the most prevalent virus here in the silver state is known as influenza a or h3n2 local emergency rooms are flooded with people who have flu-like symptoms umc summerlin st rose and mountain view hospitals say they're all seeing a big increase in patients spring valley hospital is even setting up a tent so nurses and doctors can deal with more people I know they're very, very busy, and I know the hospital is very full, and we've had to close the ER for periods of time throughout the last few weeks. Health professionals say the number one way you can avoid getting the flu is to get the flu shot and keep your hands clean. And if you do feel sick, don't let it go untreated. Another gunman opens fire inside a school. The accused shooter's explanation for wounding one of his classmates and the brave actions by a teacher that saved the lives of other students. Plus, angry over a dog's death. What happened the day a Metro officer shot and killed a dog? And the answer is its owner is now demanding. This portion of 8 News Now is brought to you by Disney on Ice. Watching 8 News Now at 11 with Paula Francis and Dave Cavassier. The news for Southern Nevada is now. A teacher is being credited with saving lives at a California high school where a student started shooting. Still, crime scene tape surrounds Taft High School because one person was hit. I was like, this can't be real. Like, I didn't know what to do. I was just in shock. Several students were inside the classroom when a 16-year-old started shooting a shotgun. At least four rounds were fired. A teacher and campus supervisor talked down the gunman while the students escaped the classroom. Police say the student gunman claimed to have been bullied by the victim and another intended target who was not hit. Just people picked on him and I think he just got tired of it. The 16-year-old who was shot is currently in stable but critical condition at an area hospital. Police have the suspected shooter in custody. A handful of people protested in front of the Welcome to Las Vegas sign tonight over the shooting of a dog. Six-year-old Bubba was shot by a Metro officer over the weekend during a police call. The officer apparently felt threatened by the dog. The owner of the dog and several activists want more accountability for police shootings involving animals. They picked a tourist destination to air their grievances because they say they want everyone to know about what happened. I will stand firm and stand strong behind my family and behind you know what I feel were my civil rights were violated so this is this means everything to me. Metro says it's doing an internal investigation into what happened. One of two UC Berkeley law students has pleaded guilty in the death of an exotic bird at the Flamingo. Eric Cuellar admitted to in instigating an act of animal cruelty back in October. Police say he and Justin Teixeira were seen on surveillance chasing around Turk the helmeted guinea fowl at the Hotel Casino's wildlife habitat. They were later seen throwing around the decapitated animal. Today in court, Cuellar's attorney stressed that his client was never charged with doing any physical harm to the bird. Teixeira still faces four counts, including killing another person's animal and torturing an animal. 
Family members of singer Jenny Rivera are now suing over her death. Rivera and several members of her team were killed in a December plane crash. They were heading to a concert in Mexico City. Four of Rivera's relatives are now suing her company, claiming the singer was negligent when she hired a plane that turned out to be faulty. It was owned by Las Vegas-based Starwood Management. Well, not too many days that start out warmer and then get colder. Yeah, I ought because the, the cold front moves through yeah. and then we uh, hit a high sure of 55 did. degrees at 11, but then once the cold front swung through, the temperature started to, to drop off. And so the wind. Exactly, the wind. So six months from now, everyone's going to be saying, <laughs> Darren, it's too hot. It's, it's up like near 110. So maybe we should enjoy this very cold weather. It's